guys, this is Kathy here on my YouTube channel, Kathy's World. Welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you're here. Today we're going to talk about one of my favorite things, books. I think I've done this once or twice in the past, and that is where I try a chapter, which means to me, and I've seen them on the YouTube sites before, but I don't really exactly know what people are doing with that, but I have adapted to my liking. So what I do, I choose my next five books that I'm going to read, and I read either the first chapter, the prologue, um, the introduction, something that would tell me a little bit about the book. And then I let you guys know how I feel about it and if I think I'll like it. So I've chosen my five books. The first book is The Once and Future Witches. I really like the cover. There's a lot of plants on it. There's a blackbird. I do believe that's handcuffs. I don't know if that's handcuffs or earrings. I'm not sure, but the book is by Alex E. Haro, author of The 10,000 Doors of January, which I've not heard of. And it says up here, a love letter to imagination, adventure, the written word, and the power of many kinds of love. All right, so that should be interesting to read. A little bit about the book. I'll give you this little overview from Goodreads. In 1893, there's no such thing as witches. There used to be in the wild, dark days before the burnings began. But now witching is nothing but tidy charms and nursery rhymes. If the modern woman wants any measure of power, she must find it at the ballot box. When the Eastwood sisters, James, Juniper, Agnes, and Beatrice Belladonna join the suffragists of New Salem to begin to pursue the forgotten words and ways that might turn the women's movement into the witches' movement. It got excellent reviews on Goodreads. It got 4.14 stars. And the genres that they give it are fantasy, historical fiction, fiction, witches, historical, adult, paranormal, magic, feminism, and audiobook. Well, <laughs> that's not really a genre, is it? So I did read the first chapter. They do mention in the first chapter there used to be dragons, but they're now all slain. Witches, but now they're all burned. In the first chapter, they talk a bit about the three sisters. Ames Juniper... James is an interesting man for a girl, but I guess it could be. She's the youngest sister, and she's wanted for murder and witchcraft, and that's how it begins. I think I felt a bit confused in the first chapter. I really didn't know where it was heading. They end up in a cemetery. And by they, I mean her. James, I guess. She hears spirits talking. She is running away because she's, she's being hunted down because she's a wanted person for murder and witchcraft the spirits or whatever she hears talking. They are discussing women's suffrage. She does mention while she's in the cemetery that witches are near. So I'm still, I'm still left a little confused. I know it's going to get better. I just had the tip of the iceberg. So I'm excited to get into that book. I am listening to it on audio. I try to listen to one audio book with every segment of books that I read because that way I can get more done. I, I tend to spend more time cleaning up and doing things like that where I can be listening rather than actually sitting down reading. All right, so that is it. I think I may enjoy it. I'm going to hold judgment. I'm not sure because I, I don't know where it's heading. All right, the second book, if you hear whistling or you hear tapping, it's really cold and windy outside and I love it. The wind, not so much, but I do enjoy the cold. Probably not super duper cold like in upstate New York, but North Carolina cold I like. Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman, a little beacon of pleasure. Funny, clever, compelling, mystery fans are going to be enthralled. In a peaceful retirement village, four unlikely friends meet weekly in a jigsaw room to discuss unsolved crimes. Together they call themselves the Thursday Murder Club. So that should be interesting, and I did read, I think I read the first chapter on this one, in the first chapter, you meet someone named Joyce. She's telling the story how she was invited initially to the Thursday Murder Club. In the first chapter, she's telling a little bit about her history. She's a nurse, so she knows a lot about wounds and things like that, which I think is going to come in handy in the Thursday Club. Her very first meeting with Elizabeth, who's part of the club, they were talking about stab wounds. I, I must say that in all my life, I've never had my first conversation with someone center around stab wounds. Although, I did work in the emergency room, and we did discuss it there quite frequently. <laughs> Elizabeth is asking Joyce all kinds of questions, and I guess she realizes her expertise in the area of wounds, and she quickly invites her to the Thursday Club. So I'm intrigued about this book. I think it may be a good one. I'm excited about that one. The third one, and I must say, I have already read this book. I did, full disclosure, 
I've completed this book. I, I completed it yesterday because I haven't gotten around to filming this quite as quickly as I wanted to. But Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore, it is written by Matthew Sullivan, shocking, charming, and thrilling. A smart, twisty crime novel set in a world that book lovers will adore. A page turner. Lydia Smith lives her life hiding in plain sight. A clerk at the Bright Ideas Bookstore, she leads a meticulously ordered existence among her beloved books. Eccentric colleagues and the book frogs. The lost and lonely regulars who spend every day browsing the overwhelmed stacks. I have Lydia. I like Lydia. I'm not going to tell you too much about it because this is a preview of the book. This is not a review of the book. So i got to go back to the first chapter since I've already read it. Uh, Lydia works in a bookstore. It seems like they have these folks called book frogs who are just kind of like, I don't want to say they're vagrants, but they're people that aren't especially up on their luck. They're kind of down on their luck and they spend their day in the bookstore. And she's gotten to know them and she cares about them. So Lydia I like throughout the book, I will tell you that. She's working one night at the bookstore. She's getting ready to close and it seems like the book frogs, you have to go through the bookstore and make sure they're not hiding somewhere or sleeping somewhere. So her and her co-worker Ernest are closing the shop. She hears books falling. When she hears these books falling, she thinks it's from the third floor of the bookstore. And so she's thinking it's probably one of the book frogs up there just making a mess or doing whatever. So after they close, she goes upstairs. Well, it's the first chapter, so I can tell you. So she goes upstairs to find one of her favorite book frogs that she really cared about hanging from whatever he hung himself from. She tries to save him, but it's too late. And as she's trying to hold him up, and she's screaming the whole time, as she's trying to hold him up, she sees something hanging out of his pocket. And so after she realizes she can't save him, she takes whatever it is out of the pocket. It's a photograph, and it's a photograph of her as a little girl at a birthday party. She has no idea what this connection could mean or be, and so that's part of the theme running throughout the book. I'm not going to tell you how I feel about the book until the reading wrap-up. That would not be right. The fourth book is Uninvited, Living Loved When You Feel Less Than, Left Out and Lonely by Lisa Terkurst, T-E-R-K-E-U-R-S-T. -E the enemy wants us to feel rejected. In Uninvited, Lisa shares her own deep personal experiences of rejection from perceived judgment of the perfectly toned woman one elliptical over to the incredibly painful childhood abandonment by her father. She leans in to honestly examine the roots of rejection as well as rejection's ability to poison relationships from the inside out, including our relationship with God. So, I, I guess I am uninvited when my husband left me uh, after 37 years of marriage. I kind of felt uninvited. And I feel uninvited when the family gets together and do things without me. And I know they have to, and I don't blame them, but I do feel uninvited and left out. So this may actually help me a lot because I do strongly believe in God, so I enjoy reading books of faith. So we'll see what happens with this one. And that's about all I can say about it. That's all I know about this book, and I, I'm looking forward to reading it, but I think it may be a painful book too. Maybe you have to re-examine some of your thoughts and feelings, which you don't always want to do. I tend to build walls, and I tend to suppress my emotions. So this could be enlightening to say the least. Lastly, on a much later note, Mutt's Promise by Julie Solomon, illustrated by Jill Weber. I like this cover. You have a truck with a dog in it. You got three dogs running, got chipmunks. At first her brother talked a lot about what would happen when they got out. But day by day it became harder to dream. It takes strength to dream and the puppies were growing weaker. So this sounds like it's told by the puppies. Then quite by accident, Lewis gave them back their strength. He was working in the barn when he began to sing quietly to himself. When Luna heard Lewis sing, she felt her feet begin to move. She had stopped thinking about their cozy haven under Gilbert's house, but now her feet were remembering for her. Only a few months had passed since those lovely days, but it seemed like forever. It hurt to think about what she had left behind, but it also reminded her of who she was. Chief, she said to her brother, we have to get out of here. I enjoyed the first chapter of this book. It's lighthearted and kind of sweet. So you have what appears to be a stray dog walking through the countryside. The dog hears an animal crying out in pain. This dog, he heads to the source of the sound and he sees what they call a fisher cat. 
and it's a type of weasel, I guess, and it's attacking a cat. And so this dog chases off the weasel. The cat's name is Butch. The owner of the cat is Mr. Thomas, and he appears on scene, and he, you know he's going to take care of his cat. Now she has been injured, but he's going to take care of the cat. And he sees the dog and realizes the dog probably at this point does not have a home. The dog calls himself Mutt, such as the name of the story, Mutt's Promise. Mr. Thomas decides to keep him if he will help keep the weasels at bay. Then we also meet another character, Penny the Chicken, and she's talking in the first chapter too. So it's going to be a cute book, I think. All right, guys, that is it for my try a chapter. I love middle grade books. So I'm looking forward to reading this. I'm painfully looking forward to reading this. This I've already finished. This one sounds interesting. And the Witches one, although the first chapter left me a bit confused, it got amazing reviews, and I think that it'll probably end up being pretty good when it's all said and done. Okay, you guys take care, and thanks for joining me for my try chapter. And I'll see you pretty shortly with my next five book reading wrap up because I've got I've got five done. I've already started the next five. I need to catch up. All right, guys, take care and happy reading. See you next time. Bye bye.